What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's time for your D&D Weekly Update. I realized I was going to try to get back to this once a week, and I missed it last week, so we're going to do the past two weeks. Uh, again, we're kind of in a weird lull. There's some contests and some interesting kind of articles talking about Dungeons & Dragons in different respects, but as far as hard crunchy news, there is the new Unearthed Arcana, but it got a lot of flack, and uh, not a lot of people really liked it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that. So if you like your uh, interest you stay tuned So first up the Dungeons and Dragons MMO Neverwinter has now officially launched live on the PlayStation 4 It has been out on PC for a while. It came out on Xbox one about a year-ish ago, and now is live on PS4. So if you have a PS4, you can pick up Neverwinter. It's free to play. Um, I would look, because you might be able to sync it with a PC account to get some cool unlocks. I know that worked with the Xbox, so be on the lookout for that. There's this article from a Hollywood reporter about Dungeons & Dragons. Behind Hollywood's closed doors, A-list stars are playing D&D. As everyone from Dwayne Johnson to Drew Barrymore roll multi-sided dice while pretending to be dwarves and wizards, says Silicon Valley's Martin Starr. There's a huge resurgence from old culture, and I'm excited about it. Um, ben Diesel, The Rock, Drew Barrymore, Stephen Colbert, Mike Myers, John Favreau, people that play. And this is just a, basically a big article about celebrities and sort of the resurgence of D&D. I've been playing D&D since I first learned about it, but I guess 5th edition being one of the big, uh, kind of making things easier... But things like Critical Role, Acquisitions Incorporated, stuff like that have a larger impact and are getting hitting a lot of other mediums that smaller D&D games and streams and things like that don't reach. So I think it's putting it more in people's minds. Like, And I guess it really probably is Critical Role. I think it's one of the largest. The size from Acquisitions Inc., which until recently was only like a couple times a year. Um... And I still think, I think that was very popular on the internet, but I don't think it reached out to Hollywood as, say, Critical Role does, where they have guest stars who are actors and voice actors and things like that. Um, so, oh, here's the D&D cartoon, uh, which we've watched on the show. Pendleton Ward, um, Adventure Time, plays D&D. You can clearly see that in Adventure Time in a lot of aspects. D.B. Weiss, who's one of the guys who directs Game of Thrones plays D&D, um, or both of, actually, Weiss and Benioff, both of the directors of Game of Thrones, they both play, um, Dan Harmon, uh, who did some amazing episodes of Dungeons and Dragons based stuff on the show Community, which you should check out, um, <laughs> Again, I don't really feel like I need to go into this too much. Uh, this is something I have heard, which they talk about here. Netflix's buzzy new supernatural drama Stranger Things opened with a game of D&D, which I have heard good things about. I haven't watched it yet, so when I do, I'll let you guys know what I think about it. But if you watched it, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Um, again, I'm not going to go too crazy into this because I feel like this is stuff that people know. D&D is popular again. It's more in the mainstream, more people know about it, and I feel like more people that haven't played are getting into it, which is a good thing, so that's awesome. Because um, that means it get, if it gets more love and more hype, that means Wizards is going to funnel more money into it, make more content, hire more people, possibly giving more people jobs, things like that. It's really cool. So, Ryan Acaba is on the d, &D podcast to talk about Draconian Knights. If the name sounds familiar to you, Orion Acaba played Tiberius on Critical Role, uh, and he has since he left type he left Critical Role to kind of pursue his own Twitch stream, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then I think the thought was to just kind of leave it, but now he's kind of doing an audio narrative, it seems. So he's doing a show called Draconian Nights. Um, talking about creating an audio narrative series called Draconian Knights centered around a family of dragonborn heroes. From what I can gather, it takes Tiberius after he leaves Vox Machina and goes back to Draconia and joins up with the rest of his family, I guess, and they kind of do... 
It's got a, a couple of people, different people playing voices, playing different characters. I haven't checked it out myself. I should. Um, just to kind of get information about it and see what it's like. But uh, if you guys have checked it out, let me know what you think. Is it worth a listen? Um, or, or, or what? Well, again, what do you guys think? Next up is quick characters. This got a shit on pretty hard, to be completely frank. Uh, Unearthed Arcana is our venue as fans and players and DMs of Dungeons and Dragons to kind of get early access, if you will, to things that are coming out for Dungeons and Dragons. Previous editions of D&D, and I'm speaking only from what I can speak to, which is 3rd and 4th edition. I've never played 4th edition, but I spent time in Barnes & Noble, so I can tell you this. Books were coming out about one a month. Maybe one every two months. I mean, I can look up here and I can count in my vision at least 30 Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 books. Actual physical books that I have. And that isn't even a fraction of... Of the amount that came out during that run and I know fourth edition was just as bad with it but it was awesome because you had content you had options you had new monsters you had campaign settings things like that fifth edition we have four books if you want to count them we've got the player's handbook the monster manual the DM's guide and the Sword Coast adventure guide we do have things like Lost Minds of Fandelver Horde of the Dragon Queen Rise of Tiamat Princess of the Apocalypse Out of the Abyss uh, you know, Curse of Strahd, which do expand the world in a very minute way in a pre-written campaign with a couple of unique magic items and things like that. But realistically, I want new content. And we're going to get that later this year with Volo's Guide to Monsters uh, when Storm King's Thunder comes out later this year. But we use, typically, on Arth Arcana as our way to get new content, new subclasses the idea of prestige classes coming into the game period new fighting styles new races things like that so that's what we're used to they started earlier this year to do the dm's guild spotlight which is basically a way for the folks from wizard of the coast say we really like these things on the dm's guild that fans have made you should think about incorporating these into your game which in my mind is like a if we were going to make stuff, we would make something like this, meaning that it's fairly balanced and it's worth you looking at. I kind of kind of drew that with the DMs Guild stuff, uh, spotlights that I do, trying to put stuff out there um, to let you guys know what I think is balanced. But this is, you know, like the ultimate say would be Wizards of the Coast. So, that aside, what did we get this month? Um, sometimes you need quick characters for a D&D session. Uh, and this is Mike Merles wrote this article, I believe, and this is all about rolling up quick characters, quick NPCs, things like that. So, uh, a little bit of background on how it works, come up with their alignment, here's their background, um, basic rules background, player's handbook background. Alternatively, for players who are comfortable defining characters, personality traits, blah blah blah, you can get their skill proficiencies, do it this way. Classes and abilities, ability score array, and they only really give it to you for the four base characters that are in the base rulebook. Um, equipment, spells for the cleric, fighter fighting styles, rogue skill proficiencies, wizard spells, race. That's it. That's the whole article. I, I'm trying to be slightly bipartisan in this but honestly i'm in the group that i'm pissed like we get one of these articles a month we don't get books very often we don't get official sanctioned content and even on arthur Kana isn't sanctioned by any means but it's like i said it's a little bit more acceptable than something in the dms guild or DD wiki or the dandy homebrew blah 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 reddit whatever you want to go with I don't know. I'm not... And the fact that it doesn't cover everything, it only covers stuff that's in the basic rules. You don't have all the races. You only have four classes. You don't have... I don't know. I mean... I get it. These are like generic, fairly common classes. Cleric, Fighter, Rogue, Wizard. But what if I want a Paladin NPC? Or a Sorcerer NPC? Or a Barbarian? Or a Bard? You don't have stuff here for me for that. So I'm looking at it from that side of things. 
But honestly, I would love to just maybe give us a freaking druid archetype expansion since we haven't had anything for druids at all in Unearthed Arcana articles so far in the Sword Coast Adventure Guide. Nothing for druids. I get that it's a strong class. I do. But give us something, like, other than just Beastmaster or Magic, you know, you know Wild Shape Druid or Magic Druid. Give us, like, a third option. But, I don't know. <laughs> it just... I feel like between all the information that's on the DM screen, which has most of stuff for making up NPCs, I don't think we needed another article about it. Maybe I'm wrong, and please let me know, because... Maybe it's just me, but I love character creation in RPGs. It's probably my favorite thing of all time. So I build characters on the regular for fun, for concepts of a game that a campaign that I might play sometime, maybe ever. And if not, then I take that character and I put them in my games. So I always have a plethora of NPCs ready to go with a fairly beefy backstory, which may get explored and may not. But maybe that's just me. So please let me know. Honestly, do you find this on Arthur Arcana article useful? Will you be using this in your game? Or would you like to have seen something else? I really, truly would like to know. Um, so that aside, let's move on. Um, Dragon Plus. I'm going to do the review on the newest Dragon magazine that came out. Uh, I'm probably going to film it after I film this. So be on the lookout for that. We love fine having a Storm King's Thunder. Um, you can submit designs still. You can also rate designs, which we I think there's only the one right now, uh, which is this kind of 8-bit Storm Giant, I guess. Storm King pixel version. So if you guys want to get in and submit your designs, you can do this. You always you have a chance to get some pretty solid stuff if you do. So there's only been one design, guys you can get in and try to get something. So something giant related, D and D related, you have a chance to probably win some pretty sweet stuff. I don't know if they have a, what you can win. Um, it doesn't actually say, but either way, you should just do it anyway, because it's awesome. And you can have your shirt design out there. Um, it was Gary Gygax's birthday three days ago. Um, and there's just this quote that they posted on the D&D Facebook page. One more thing, don't spend too much time merely reading. The best part of the work is the play, so play and enjoy. I feel like that covers everything in Dungeons & Dragons as well as, honestly, your job too if you can do it. So, I don't know, Gary Gygax is just an inspiration for all of us who play any RPG out there. He's the father of Dungeons & Dragons. I don't want to say he's the father of role-playing games in general, but I feel like that's a fair justification to accidentally make and maybe stereotype. But so just thank you again, Gary, Mr. Gygax. You've changed my life forever, and you're changing people's lives every day by as more and more people are introduced to Dungeons and Dragons. So thank you. I talked about this in another video, which may or may not be out. I don't know how the timing is going to go on these. But Lost Minds of Fandelver is available for purchase in Roll20. You can check out a video uh, in the, I'll have the link in the description if it's out by then, uh, where I kind of go into this in depth. So this is really big news for Roll20 and D&D. So you can check that video out for more information. And lastly, Friendship and Magic. This is a My Little Pony D&D t-shirt. Um, join us in celebrating Friendship Day all year long. All funds raised go to the Points of Light Foundation, so it's all going for charity, and it's a fairly solid wizard's uh, pinky's a barbarian, rarity looks like a, I guess a wizard, no, a rogue, nope, rainbow's the rogue, applejack's a ranger, uh, fluttershy's a druid, twilight's a wizard, I guess maybe a sorcerer for rarity and a barbarian for pinkie pie. Either way, this is cool. I'm going to buy this shirt. I'm going to tell you right now. So I think it's neat, and it helps out a good cause. So if you guys want to help out a good cause, and you like D&D, &D and you like My Little Pony, or you like D&D, &D, or you like My Little Pony, and you like helping out good people, Hasbro's donating their profits to this, so I say jump in on it. I'm going to. 
Whoops. Sorry, guys. Turns out I actually missed some stuff uh, for this week's D&D update, and I didn't want to wait to include it. So that was my bad. I just didn't even just slip my mind. So we're going to go over the new stuff that I missed, which is the sage advice for the month of July. The reason that I didn't really catch this is because I took so long to do the last update. I was covering the June sage advice in the update I just did. It's already been like a whole month, so now the July sage advice is out. There's some good stuff in this one, so here we go. So, uh, some interesting clarifications on concentration stuff and things that work when combining kind of multi-classing. So, when Barbarian uses Reckless Attack, do you grant advantage to all enemies or only the target you attack? Uh, all attack rolls have advantage against you regardless. If a cleric uses Destructive Wrath, does it maximize all damage? I'm assuming this was supposed to be a Tempest Cleric, specifically. Um, me oh, yes, it is. Destructive Wrath. So, basically, if you use um, like Destructive Smite or something like that, it only maximizes the lightning or thunder damage, not all the damage associated. Fighter can have multiple fighting styles active at once, assuming they're mutually exclusive. Uh, like dueling in defense would be fine. Can a silence cast by way of Shadow Monk be dispelled? Silence is still representing a spell, the spell silence, so yes, it can be dispelled. Can the monk's open hand technique push a larger, larger creature? Creature. The answer is yes. So open hand monk, when they connect with the flurry of blows punch, regardless of the size of the creature, they can shove them back ten, five or five feet or ten feet or knock them prone. So if you can picture that, that can be a gnome or a halfling monk can punch a dragon and knock it to the ground. Just because that's apparently key can let you do crazy stuff. Um, divine Sense from Paladin doesn't work on a tiefling because they're considered a humanoid, not a, f a fiend. Um, assassinate's only supposed to work on the first round because it's technically the only round you're surprised. And, again, big news, if you have a spell that does not have material components and you're a sorcerer and you use subtle spell, canceling the verbal and somatic components of the spell, it cannot be counterspelled because there is no effect to counterspell because they can't see it. Um, heavy armor only gives you disadvantage on stealth, not dex saving throws. Uh... Temporary stat bump fulfill a multi-class prerequisite. The intent is that your base score, not a temporary score. So if you have some sort of item that temporarily elevates your uh, one of your scores, it won't allow you to multi-class. So I guess that means you technically couldn't get a headband of intellect to set your intelligence at 19 to then try to become a wizard. It wouldn't work. A barbarian cleric could cast or have cast and use spiritual weapon while raging because spiritual weapon is a non-concentration spell and uh, rage cancels concentration spells but doesn't affect things outside of that. So same thing with I guess a barbarian with mirror image which would be terrifying. Uh, four barbarians, three illusory but you don't know which ones come running at you. I think I'd probably give you advantage on intimidation checks if you were four raging barbarians charging at someone. Uh, and a Barbarian Battlemaster Fighter can still use their maneuvers while raging, nothing says you can't. Elemental Adept is the only feat in the player's handbook that can be taken more than once. It is also the only feat in the player's handbook that specifically states that it can be taken more than once. Uh, the other ones, uh, meaning you can only take them once, like Resilient Constitution can only be taken once, or Resilient Any Stat can only be taken once, you can't take it to get access to multiple uh, saving throw proficiencies. Class features and feats affect a shape change druid. Does tough feet have effect while shifting? The answer is no. Um, you cannot, again, I've said this before, people, I feel like people may get confused at this from shows like Critical Role, which are sort of a tweaked version of D&D uh, 5th Edition, because it did come from Pathfinder, and they, have, they use the optional flanking rules and things like that. Those are not base rules in the game. Cleave and f and flanking are not base rules in the game. They're optional rules you can add via the Dungeon Master Guide, but to stress this ability check thing, 
a roll of a natural one on an ability check does not count as an automatic failure, and a roll of a natural 20 on an ability check does not count as an automatic success. It just counts as a 1 or a 20. That's it. So, rolling a 1 on your stealth check, even if you have a 15 from expertise and you roll a 1 on a stealth check, doesn't matter. You don't automatically fail that stealth check. Same thing with your natural 20. If you roll a natural 20 and get a 21 on your persuasion roll, and the other person out insights you, doesn't matter. They don't believe your lie. So, or, or they don't get swayed by your words. Uh, Greater Restoration will ins uh, restore intelligence lost via an intelligence devourer. Um, does a grapple or a shove trigger the Tempest Cleric's Wrath of Storm or Battlemaster Repost? No, because it's not a hit or a miss in the case of a repost. It has to be an actual attack. Uh, I have a readied action. Can I stop readying to take an opportunity attack, or is a ready a full turn commitment? Again, readying uses your reaction to do the trigger you say. You can choose to end that and use it for an opportunity attack if you'd like. The wizard casts a fireball spell during a surprise round. Do the enemies have disadvantage on the saving throw? No, surprise has zero effect on saves. You can't move, you can't take actions, and you can't take reactions, but you can still save. Um, are attacks with a net always made with disadvantage? Unless you have a special ability that says otherwise, any net attack has disadvantage because you're either within 5 feet of your target or you're attacking at long range, which is between 5 and 15 feet for a net. I'm guessing the feet being sharpshooter will let you have a 15 foot range, and then you could sharpshooter a net 15 feet away. Can a spellcaster cast spells off target to minimize damage to party members from a spell like Shatter? Spellcaster chooses where to place the point of origin on a spell like Shatter, so yes, you can position it to be advantageous to your allies. Is a touch spell considered a melee attack for the purpose of subduing foe rather than killing? Long story short, no. Having a range of touch doesn't mean it's a melee attack. It will say it's a melee attack if it is one. Does casting a spell as a ritual require concentration if the spell doesn't normally require it? Answer is yes. If you're using a spell that takes longer than one action to cast, meaning six seconds, you do have to concentrate on doing it. Can permanent magical effects be dispelled, or are they no longer considered magical effects once permanent? If the effect of a spell becomes permanent, it can be dispelled unless its description says otherwise. This one makes me wonder if that's a typo and it says it, it should be, it can't be dispelled unless, it dis uh, unless its description says otherwise, but I'm not sure. Um... Because magical items, for instance, are enchanted, but they can't be dispelled. Like, you can't cast Dispel Magic on a magic sword to make it not magical. It doesn't work that way. Or even, there's Suppression isn't a thing, so you can't su suppress a uh, magic item. Spellcasters have to learn a ritual version of a spell apart from the normal version, or it's the same. Um, basically, you know. If you know the spell, you know the ritual version. Interesting stuff here. If someone casts Disintegrate on you, dropping you to zero hit points, can something like Relentless Endurance or any of those things that when you go to zero hit points, you go to one instead? The answer is no, you are dead, turned to dust, because you did go to zero hit points. Uh, Relentless Endurance won't save you. Wild-shaped druids will get murdered with Disintegrate. Blew my mind here. When you drop to zero hit points, as in your animal form, the damage spills over, typically, you when you go to zero, you revert. If a wild-shaped druid is hit to zero hit points with Disintegrate, they are turned to dust, and that is that. So be mindful of that, folks. Um, Hero's Feast grants you immunity to the poison damage and to the poisoned condition. And can Minor Illusion create a fog? The answer is no. It can use to create objects like a stool, a rock, maybe even a wall, but not an atmospheric effect. Okay, a uh, short little thing. Wizards on transparency um, yeah, on their social media, they are adding new hashtags and uh, they just want to kind of get out there and let more people know who they are on social media. Um, we know something that would generate discussion and lead questions if simply done without notice. Uh, you may see hashtags like hashtag WotC staff, hashtag wizards employee, hashtag love my WotC job, etc. 
Our goal is that if a post is taken out of context by someone who doesn't know our talkers on social media, such as a new player, we want to ensure the reader know that the author of the post has vested interest in Wizards and its products, etc. And then there was another, the second week, um, regarding uh, the D&D podcast. Ethan Gilsdorf drops in to chat about his recent TEDx talk that shows the good that D&D can do for kids and adults. So, um... Lore you should know, Matt Cernet and Chris Perkins elaborate on magic item with long history in D&D, the Ring of Winter. So, you can check that out on the D&D podcast. And that's gonna be it, guys. Sorry, I'm gonna have to... It's gonna be like a weird jump cut. Um, and it's just gonna go to the end of the episode right here, but... I didn't want to leave these out, so I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. But that's pretty much it, guys. So thank you again for coming and checking out the D&D update this week. I promise to get back on a weekly schedule this week, although I will be going away for the weekend. But uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, so you can click right up here to check out Know Your Role. I'm sorry this has been taking forever to get out this episode from this past week. I've literally edited it four times, and it hasn't worked for whatever reason. i got to figure that out. Kickstarter Spotlight right here in the middle. This is all about Tablescapes uh, Dungeon Tiles from Secret Weapon. I uh, just filmed the video a little while ago. I'm super pumped about this. It's for terrain for your D&D games or other tabletop games. And down the bottom here is the DM's Guild Spotlight for this week. This one is all about additional minor properties for your magic items. There's a list of 20 in the player or in the dungeon master guide this expands adding 80 more giving you a total of 100 or really 99 additional properties to add little tiny things to add to your magic items or your mundane items to make them a little magical so anyway guys i hope you enjoy this if you like this video and all the other videos that i've put out you can slam right down here to subscribe to the channel that way you can stay up to date we just recently broke 700 subs so i'm super pumped we're going to be doing something super epic when we hit a thousand uh, at 500, I already gave away a copy of the Player's Handbook and a few other things, so who knows what we're going to do at 1,000. Um, but anyway, guys, I really appreciate all your support, and I hope you have a great week. Happy gaming. Come check out all of our streams. Make sure you check out uh, Force Grade Giant Hunters on the Nerdist channel every Monday, uh, where you can see Matt Mercer DM for Chris Hardwick, Ashley Johnson, soon to be Brian Posehn, I hear. Um, and this is all about a precursor to the Storm Giants Thunder coming out later this year. Make sure you check out Acquisitions Incorporated every Wednesday. They just completed the arc, kind of going through the mines, run by Chris Perkins. This is all of the people that you see every, uh, every convention, PAX East, PAX Prime. This is them and a weekly schedule. You can check that out. Make sure you check out Heroes and Halfwits from Rooster Teeth and the Chief of Achievement Hunter. I believe that comes out on Wednesdays as well. Uh, and every Tuesday night, right before my stream, is the Waffle Crew run by Chris Perkins. They are playing Curse of Strahd. This is Commander Holly. This is Pro Jared. This is a lot of people you know from YouTube. Go check out their stream, and then when that stream's done, jump over to my stream right after twitch.tv slash nerdimmersion. Anyway, guys, I've talked a lot. This is the fourth video I've filmed in a row, so I'm a little bit tired. I want something to drink. My throat's getting sore. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time.